Escape from Reality. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode on the series Quran Logics, where I take a very quick look at the logics used and deployed in the Islamic Quran. Now in the Quran there are hardly any explicit or precise statements, and if there are, they're faulty and wrong. So in order to make anything fit and provide something remotely coherent and comprehensible, humans are required to repair all the mistakes, inconsistencies and contradictions. So in this video, I'm going to look at a claim in the Quran regarding two of the gods and their kids. There are several sentences in the Quran where they mention a figure called Jesus, who is Isa in the Arabic, and I think it's Jeshua or Joshua or something in Hebrew. Now in the Quran, this guy Jesus is not conceived like normal people, but by an angel blowing into Mary, the mother, who is also the sister of Aaron and Moses and the daughter of Imran. So, well, this Jesus then is separated from the guy in the New Testament by over a thousand years, according to the Jewish legends, that is. Now, this blowing as method of fertilization is contradicted in the Quran itself. It's somewhere else where Jesus is not conceived by blowing into a woman, but is created from dust, just like Adam. And the Quran then makes the claim that Christians have this Jesus as a son of their Christian God, also a single parent. And then just for good measure, the Quran claims that Ezra is the son of the Jewish God. So Jesus, son of Christian God, Ezra, son of Jewish God. Hmm. Is this the logics in the Quran where all non-Islamic gods must have some sort of offspring? Does this make the Islamic god more monotheistic? And of course, I, any, any apologist now will jump up and down and tell us that this is not what the Quran says. But even Ibn Abbas agrees that this is what it says in the Quran, as do the Jalalains. Did the Jews ever claim that their God had or has or whatever a son? No, they don't. Ezra is an esteemed character, but not a godson. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the, the Quran says the Jews and not a sect of Jews, as is claimed by most apologists, the entire body of which is hilarious, given that the author of the Quran says, the Jews say Ezra is the son of God. The excuse that all Jews are sons of their God is equally feeble, given that the Quran singles out a name. So while making these obviously false claims, the Islamic God says in this book that the Islamic God should destroy them. Now, is any of this logical and befitting an all-knowing, perfect creator God? 